This video features working with epoxy resin. Epoxy resin is a chemical reaction and therefore should be used by adults. So this video is not geared for children. Hey guys, it's Lexi here and today I'm going to show you in this video how I make resin Furbies. This is my first resin Furby I made with candy valentine hearts. And I made it for Valentine's Day, but didn't make a video, so I thought I would do one now. I did a face-up with acrylic paints, and I used yarn wefts for hair. Um, that's basically it. So how I started the process was I found a McDonald's Furby that didn't have a lot of openings to it, and any openings I did see, um, I cut the hair off and filled with hot glue so that the mold maker wouldn't seep into any crevices. So I used a mold box out of cardboard and used mold maker and this is the mold that was produced from it. There was dots on the ears because we had some hiccups but the crevice inside shows the detailings of the Furby. Now today's Furby I want to make with D&D dice. I've gotten into D&D recently so I wanted to make a Furby that was filled with dice. It makes sense to me, don't ask me why. With the candy hearts, they kind of fell down to the bottom, so first off with the dice, we're going to have to glue them together in a formation that is pleasing to the eye, and so they won't settle all at the bottom. So here I am figuring out a formation that will look cool, but also fit in the Furby mold. I wanted to showcase as much color and as much uh, different types of dice that I could while still being able to fit inside the mold appropriately. So this is the configuration I came up with and I already did it with this set of dice. I liked how opaque these dice were so that's why I went ahead and used this set of dice and this is how it looks. Next, we're going to see if it fits inside of the mold. And it does! Huzzah! It still falls to the bottom, but it'll be okay. Next, we're going to take our epoxy resin, put some glitters in it. I chose gold glitter to go with the gold numbers of the dice. And then fill up the mold with the dice inside. There we go. So here I am setting the mold on a makeshift stabilizing unit because of those ear drip things. And then I'm going to put the glitter in the epoxy resin. And then we're going to fill it up. So here's part A of the epoxy resin. We put half of that and then half of the epoxy B. And then we're going to mix it up with a popsicle stick. You want to be careful with bubbles. You don't want to go too fast to avoid the bubbles. But you want to make sure to scrape along the sides and mix everything together so that you know that it's ready. And at this point, I'm just hoping it's ready and <laughs> making sure that I see that it's clear. And next step, we'll add the glitter. Here we're adding the glitter, so much glitter. I wanted it to be a little bit of glitter to resin because I wanted to see the dice clearly, but I was a bit heavy handed with the glitter and it made the resin mostly opaque and not see through really at all. Great. Excellent. Next up, and I'm sorry that the filming of this is interesting but I the resin wants to cure fast so here I am just making sure that the resin gets into the ear holes and I do that by pouring in some resin first and then moving the mold around so that the resin coats all of the ears because the ears are at the bottom of the mold and once those are filled I'm going to make sure to put the dice inside and then cover it all up with resin. And here's the popped out product. Again, sorry that wasn't the best video of it, but pouring resin 
is very stressful for me. But it turned out pretty great, not as see-through and clear as I had liked because of all that gold glitter, but it's growing on me. Next up, we're going to take our acrylic paint. We're going to mix it with water and mix some layers of paint together to start painting on the whites of its eyes. And from past customizing experiences, any color that you want to pop, you should put a white base coat on. So that's what I'm going to do with the beak and head sensor. But we're starting out with the eyes. You want a watery paint and build up the layers off of that. And I found using a clean paintbrush to wipe away the excess paint that got into the crevices works really well. Next up, we're doing the other eye. And then once both eyes dry, we're just gonna keep building up layers until it's nice and opaque. We're also gonna do that with the beak and forehead sensor. And here you go. So next we're going to color the beak and the forehead sensor. For the beak, I'm going to use this color. And for the forehead sensor, I'm going to use this color. With metallic and color shifting paints, it's hard to do a watered down mixture because the formula is different from regular acrylic paint. But I just played with it until I got a good consistency that I liked. And these paints will take a lot more layers than a normal white acrylic paint did. Make sure to get into all the crevices. But not too much into the crevices because it'll be hard to clean up if you get into the wrong crevices. And now with the forehead sensor, this uh, only took a couple of layers. And here we are turning upside down again. And I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Now that that is dried after several layers, we are going to work on the eyes. I'm using these colors because I wanted to match the water marbling effect of the dice that I used. And I've never tried this before, so we're just gonna go for it. I used an even more watered down paint so that the colors will mix and mingle just like a water marble effect. And I started out with the same blue that I used on the beak. Again, I've never done this before, and I just really wanted to try it, and I tried to match the dice colors as much as possible. And I just wanted to bring in the other colors besides gold, because I feel like there's just so much gold. I really wanted these colors to pop. And I also wanted to make the eye color predominantly purple, because I used blue on the beak a lot. And I want it to be as big and round as these eyes are on the Valentine's Day Furby, so I'm just gonna play with that off camera. And here's what I've gotten. I still need to clean up the eyes a bit, but next I'm moving on to the eyebrows, so I figured I can clean up right after the eyebrows. I'm also gonna add detail to the beak and sensor, just like I did for the Valentine's Furby. Again, I wanted that purple to pop, so I used the same purple for the eyebrows. This is such a busy design, I wanted to keep as much simple as I could. And with a less watered down version, because it's hard to stick to the epoxy resin, 
I tried to put on some eyelashes. I think I call them eyebrows because they kind of look like eyebrows to me. But here are the eyelashes as well. And I figured if I just put on blobs of paint, I could go back in with the toothpick and shape and define the eyelashes as I saw fit. It's not really a predominant feature on the Furby, so I don't really take too much time and fuss with it. Afterwards, I added some eye shines. And the detail of the beak, it's so gold. Now we're going to add the hair. I used yarn wuffs and glue wall to add them all together onto the Furby. Now we're going to take a paintbrush and slab some glue onto the Furby. And then I didn't really make yarn wefts, more like I brushed out yarn pieces. And I'm just going to glob some glue on top of them and position them into the places I think are appropriate. Yeah, we're going to need a lot more glue. Be very generous with the glue. very generous with the glue. There we go. I'm just globbing that. Oh, that was unfortunate. At this point, I was just kind of done, very done. I just wanted to get this part over with and let it dry overnight. Also, using DuraClear matte varnish, we're going to seal up our paint job. Also, now is probably a good point to point out that if you want close-up pictures of the Furby, I'll be posting them on my Instagram. We're going to let that and the hair dry overnight. And here we go. It looks pretty great. The hair is a bit trollish for me, so we're just going to use some scissors and carefully shape a style that seems okay. And that seems all right to me. And here's the finished product. I'm very happy with how they turned out, and I'll be making more in the future. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you later.